Well, joining me now is Finlay Martin. And Finlay, bringing out this new e-book, Pro Wrestling Through the Power Slam Years, just first of all, how much work has this book taken to actually create this? Um, well, I finished uh, Power Slam in July of 2014, and I rather naively uh, thought that I would have the book finished by the end of November 2014. How wrong I was! Uh, it was uh, finally published in September of 2015. Um, I don't know, I was probably working on it. I was doing other things as well, like stuff on the website and other things as well, like podcasts and things. So I was probably working on it, I don't know, maybe eight months, something like that, nine months, something like that. I mean, it works out at 245,818 words. So it's a mighty project. Uh, so there's a hell of a lot of work that went into it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, on the subject of pro wrestling from 1994 to 2014, although it does include a lot of information as well about uh, the 1992 to 1993 and 94 period as well, the, the two and a half years that Superstars of Wrestling existed before Power Slam was launched in July of, two, uh, sorry, July of 1994, um, when you think of the period in question, 92 to 2014, and, and there's also information in there as well about um, the period from July of 2014 up until September of this year when the book was finally finished. Um, I mean, I, I finally finished writing it on the day uh, that I actually submitted it to Amazon, believe it or not. Uh, that is the beauty of the e-book. Um, so... Um, when you think of the period in question, you could you could write 750,000 million words on that period quite easily and still not cover everything. So I feel like I've covered all of the major stories um, and given a lot of analysis to them as well. So um, you know the, the, all the major things are covered from WWF, WWE, WCW, ECW, TNA, New Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah, All Japan companies like that so you know there's a lot of analysis in there a lot of uh, in-depth coverage of the major events but obviously i couldn't cover everything that would be unrealistic in 200 even in 245,000 words and of course while you've been writing this you'll have noticed just what changes what massive changes have actually happened in that period of time in the wrestling industry Oh yeah, I mean it's. Uh, I mean, as I say, I mean you you could literally write um, a, a million words on it, and you wouldn't cover everything. So I mean, the book uh, was dedicated to, as I say, the major stories and also the changes in the industry from the 1992 period to 2015. So I mean, the the huge one, of course, was when Vince McMahon finally embraced change in 1997, which led to the Attitude Era. So, I mean, that was the huge one. So there's a lot of information there about how Vince McMahon's battle with himself um, to uh, accept that he could no longer uh, promote this brand of pro wrestling, which he'd really been clinging to since, since he took over from, uh, from his father. Well, maybe not 82. He took over from his father in 82, but it was really 84, uh, which would be the Hulkamania area, which really gave us... Uh, what many people believe in the 80s as a golden period for the World Wrestling Federation. So, I mean, what he was doing is, in 1992 was not that dissimilar from what he was doing in 1988, when you think about it. And I know I was a massive fan of, of the magazine. I mean, I, I, I subscribed to it, actually. I bought every copy. And, I mean, how hard was it to decide that it was time to stop writing the magazine, first of all? Um... It was it was really one of those things where it was it was you know we had the crash in September of 2008 that affected the magazine business uh, and it had been you know basically a double digit decline for the entire magazine industry ever since. I mean I received an email from someone in the magazine industry uh, a couple of months ago um, and he told me that um, they're only expecting magazines to decline by. 9% over the next year from September 2015 to September 2016. And that was considered good news. So, I mean, that really sums up the state of the magazine industry, um, in that it's, it's been in decline ever since 2008. Um, so when you're in an industry that's, that's in you know, terminal decline, it's very much like if you worked a blockbuster video. I mean, you know, 
what a brand blockbuster video had, but it was something that was unsustainable in with, with technological advances. You know, I mean, people don't go to video shops anymore or hire, to hire DVDs or Blu-rays, you know, you know let alone VHS. Uh, I mean, we just don't because we have Netflix and Amazon Prime and all these other things. So, I mean, with the magazine industry, I mean, it still exists, and it's still going to exist for many years to come, but it's a declining industry. Um, and when you realize that your business isn't going to turn around no matter how hard you work and no matter what you do, you reach the conclusion that it's something that you've just got to move away from at a certain point. Uh, it's like anything. If it's not working for you and you've got the option to do something else, I mean, you really should do it. I mean, that's what we should all do in life, I feel. Um, for me, there were various things that I could have done to keep Power Slam going, I go through them in the book, but none of them were, were none of them were really palatable to me, and nor would they have been to the readership. They would have resulted, it would have involved a lot of cost cutting, and I think the overall quality of the magazine, certainly in terms of production, would have declined. So I would rather that the magazine went out, went out while it still um, was a, a quality product. I felt, and to me as well, the first issue of Power Slam went on sale in July of 1994. To me, it just felt like a great way to go out. The final issue went on, went on sale in July of 2014. So it was exactly 20 years to the month after the first issue went out. And, you know, I was able to write my own exit, you know, um, and it just felt like it was time to leave that behind and move into the ebook market. I planned to write this book for quite a few years. I've been thinking about it. Uh, some people had said to me, oh, well, why don't you do the book while you're doing the magazine? But because the magazine was, you know, when you're in the magazine business, I, was the, I published the magazine as well. I did the typesetting, just all the advertising, did all the pictures. You know, I, did, I didn't write it all, but I did write the majority of the, of the magazine. So I did a lot of work on it. And when you're in that position in the magazine industry, it's not so much a job as a lifestyle. Um, so I was working long hours, and there was no way I could have done something as well as the magazine. And certainly I couldn't have done uh, Pro Wrestling Through the Power Slam years to the standard that it is, and, and with the detail uh, and the analysis and you know just the, um, just the effort that went into it. There's no way I would have been able to do that as well as the magazine. Both would have suffered, you know. So to me, it was time to leave that behind go out hopefully on a high um, and uh, and then move on to uh, to the next chapter of uh, of my career which is pro wrestling through the power slam years so hopefully this will uh, with this will be uh, a success and um, this is you know I have a second book planned which I'm hoping to start uh, either this week or next week so I'm hoping that uh, I can move on to do the second book and and that this can be my career from this point forward but we will see the public will decide it always does <laughs> and looking at that second book i mean just what is the theme going to be is it going to be looking at a certain amount of time um no what it's going to be it's going to be called the power slam interviews uh, this will be um i don't think it will be that much shorter than the first book but it will be a lot quicker for me to do it because 60 percent of the work 70 percent of the work maybe has already been done so it'd be like all the, you know, because we interviewed so many people over the years. Uh, I mean, which was your favourite interview in in, uh, in Power Slam? Well, I mean, when I look at it, I think I know you did a few with them, um, you know, looking at Kurt Angle and people like that. But obviously, also the English ones as well. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I know that you're quite a big fan and a big advocate of wrestling in England, and it must be great to see that you've seen the progress of English wrestling as well. Uh, well I mean, really, to be honest with you, Power Slam didn't really do enough on British wrestling. I think you look back and you think, well, what would you have done differently? And certainly now after the success of Insane Championship Wrestling's event at the SCCC um, over the weekend, and you look at how Progress is doing and Revolution Pro and Stephen Flooders Preston City Wrestling's doing so well in Preston. And there's all these other companies that don't really get that much publicity. Uh, but you look at where the British wrestling scene is now. I mean, it's, it's all these companies have done it the right way. I mean, they've started small and they've built themselves up uh, gradually. Um, you know, people, they've, they've built up individual brand names, which is, you know, the key to running a successful company. So it means you're not British wrestling, you are in 10 Championship Wrestling, you're, or you're Preston City Wrestling. 
so you've got that brand name and they've done that and that's you know unbelievable credit to these guys but by starting small running small venues filling them keeping the costings right not losing money which may seem like such a fundamental business thing but you go back to british wrestling in the 90s and and very much in the 2000s as well lots of companies just didn't have the costings right and they were spending far more than they were making and they didn't last and it ended up causing it was it was a real black eye for british wrestling because you'd have a company that would start and maybe only run a few shows and then would cease to exist these guys that are around now Fans have total confidence in the brands because they've been built up. Um, and when they're advertising shows for throughout 2016, people are buying tickets to them uh, with full confidence that the shows will occur and that the talent that's advertised will be there. I mean, Progress has just sold a lot of season tickets for 2016. What they've done is they've actually sold t- season tickets for next year's shows, uh, which is just such a credit to them that their audience has got total confidence in them that they will buy tickets to you know events that are going to take place all, all next year. You go back and look at wrestling promotions that existed in the late 90s and the, most of the 2000s in this country, and people often wouldn't have faith that there'd even be a second show with some of them. So, I mean, these companies that are around now, are, you know, it's total credit to them. They deserve all the credit in the world for, for as I say, just running a tight business model that, that works for them works for their audience um and and has legs and um and is you know everyone has confidence that it's going to be around you know three six